the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh God, hear our humble prayer. Pour your Holy Spirit upon every person within our diocese, that all may come to know, love, and serve you as faithful and generous witnesses to the enduring hope found only in you. With the help of Mary, our Mother, may we bear witness to the glory of God with great joy. Bless this campaign by igniting new enthusiasm for the sacred mission we share as disciples and your son, especially as we care for those who experience despair. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the source of our hope, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks to everybody for coming tonight. We really appreciate you doing this to learn more about uh, the campaign and all that's coming up. Witness to Hope is the first time our diocese has attempted to do a diocesan-wide capital campaign to take care of its future needs. Our diocese turned 80 this year, and we're one of about 10 dioceses in the country that have never done this before. The diocese hopes to raise 65 million over five years of pledges. The campaign happens in three waves. So a number of parishes went last fall, 16 of them. The ones in our area that you might know the best would be St. Jude and DeWitt and the Cathedral. About 25 parishes are going in this wave from January to June, where we hope to get all of the, the pledges in and then the payments to come in over the next five years. And then there'll be another wave in the fall of all the parishes who haven't won. So it's just to say that all the parishes at one point or another will be going in this campaign. The diocese is working with, uh, they've got a contract with Greater Mission, a company that specializes in Catholic fundraising initiatives. And so each parish gets one representative from Greater Mission to work with the parish. Our representative is Joe Citro. I'm going to let Joe tell you a little bit about himself. He works with two other campaigns in this wave, St. Joe's and St. John's, and St. Peter's and Eaton Rapids. But by far the, the most impressive uh, credential, though he has worked in uh, development for Christian organizations for the last six years, his most impressive credential is that when he went to Catholic school, a year above him and a year below him were two of Hulk Hogan's kids. <laughs> so the Hulkster actually sat on the school board of the school that Joe attended. So I'll let Joe. Uh, so I'm the name is Joe Citro. Uh, so I'm like the campaign director here. Uh, so I have a bridge in Florida, so I grew up there, grew up in Tampa Bay. So it was great to be with the Holster. One, one story my, my dad told me, my dad was on the school board and sat next to him, and he said that his arms were as big as my dad's legs. So he was just like, it was pretty ridiculous. Anyway, past Hulk Hogan. Uh, I, I'm a proud Catholic school, so I went to Catholic elementary school, as well as a Salesian Catholic high school. So I'm definitely uh, very proud of that, very proud of, of the Catholic high school culture and elementary school culture I have that developed me into who I am today. I'm also a cradle Catholic. So uh, again, I'm raised in Florida, and then, uh, I've been working here now for almost almost a year, actually. So my last wave, I worked with Queer and Miraculous Metal, <coughs> St. James and Mason. I worked with St. Cornelius and Cyprian in Bunker Hill, as well as St. Mary on the Lake in Manatee Beach. So those are the four parishes I worked uh, before this wave, is what they're called. And I'll have to say all four parishes being cold. So why am I here, though, past getting you to goal? I'm here to be a resource. I'm here to help you all as you work towards achieving this great milestone. You know, you're in a very unique place as a parish. This is a very unique opportunity that you have. Father will talk a little more about what exactly the parish is looking to do and how they're looking to do it. Uh, but this is a process, a prayerful private process, which we believe works. You know, we're a firm as Father mentioned it, that works exclusively with the Catholic Church. That's our niche. That's what we're good at. Uh, so that's, that's what we do. And as you can see, you know, the Diocese of Richmond was our last campaign we ran. 
in Virginia. We raised $104 million on a $65 million goal. So it just shows, you know, we believe our process works. I'm also glad to see that that actually is uh, now up to 24 million. So we raised 24 million on the $65 million goal so far here in Lansing. So again, it's just to share and say that, you know, this process is something that works and that we, and we take a lot of pride in the work that we do. You know, I'm here to pour my blood, sweat, and tears and make this work for you guys. Uh, and that's just, just part, of, part of this job. It's something we feel we're called to do. We're called to help these parishes and help utilize this process, which will transform a parish in a lot of ways. You know, we're going from zero to almost a million dollars in six months. That's what we're doing. So people are like, that is crazy. There's no way it's possible. Um, but it's an opportunity to build your community and bring it up even more so than it is now. It's an opportunity to challenge yourselves as a parish and say, what can we do together? And so that's our hope. That's my hope for you all. Uh, and Father will give us an update as to where we're at uh, and talk for some more information. I must confess, when I left full-time here and went to work in Lansing uh, in September, I was naive to the realities throughout our diocese. And I've been to a lot of diocese around the country. I've actually been to a lot of Catholic uh, places around the world even. And um, just to kind of get wrapped up in your own bubble and then being here for close to 18 years, this community is unique, as most of you know, and there are a lot of great strengths in this community. So when I started working in Lansing, part of what the bishop has me doing, especially this first year, is just cruising around, and I actually drove over 3,000 miles in February and March uh, just visiting different priests, youth directors, DREs, uh, volunteers, etc. I'll try to get the lay of the land so we can see how can we serve them better. And what I'm finding is not every community, and I, I mean I knew that not every community was like this, but to the degree that not every community is like this. So if you want to take out this trifle, we're going to walk through some of the different aspects of this capital campaign. And I'm just going to elaborate briefly on, on some of these, uh, uh, where, the, where the funds would be going. So the first one, if you look on this page, strengthening our parishes. There are a lot of parishes in our diocese, in this geographic region, that are really hurting. And I'm sure you've, in the Faith Magazine, you can See how some of them have been shut down, clustered, merged, turned into oratories, etc. And so that's not, that's a reality that this community has never known. Um, and so some of those are necessary. You know, we don't have a French quarter anymore. We don't have an Italian quarter anymore. It's not the same ethnic diversity that we had, where all the Polish people would live in one neighborhood and they'd have their own church, that type of thing. Uh, so sometimes you need to close down parishes, that type of thing. But in general, we have some, some communities, especially in the Flint region, that are just really hurting because of situations beyond their control. And as missionary disciples, our job is not just to become disciples, but missionary disciples, to spread the gospel, to bring the church to, to the places in the world that need it. So to visit some of these places, it's heartbreaking to see that they can't even afford basic necessities and by basic necessities, I'm, I'm referring more in the terms of ministerial necessities. So they may just have a priest, uh, one priest, and some volunteers working in their parish. Or maybe a couple paid staff, but maybe they don't even have a youth minister. They don't have a music person who's paid. They don't have DREs doing their, their faith formation. They don't have official adult faith formation events. And so this, this capital campaign will, will give a, us a great opportunity to help build up the diocese. One thing that we're trying to do downtown is, and I'm parsing my worst character because I'm guilty of it too, is re reorient how we talk about it because we're all the diocese. The diocese is a geographic region. It's a canonical thing that comes from Rome. It's divided up. And so we are a geographic region. All of our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we all want to build each other up in the faith. And so this is going to give us a great opportunity to build up our diocese. So those of us downtown are not the diocese, we're just the building and people like you guys, and we're trying to serve, uh, just like Greater Mission is here to serve the diocese, which is this geographic region around E1 parishes. So that first one, the 22.8 million, that's gonna be going to build up some of these communities and some of these parishes that really need a shot in the arm so that they can continue to minister to the people uh, in their communities. In my particular position, uh, at the diocese, the director of youth ministry, we have 
a lot of these um, youth directors or parents or pastors calling or emailing asking if we have scholarships to come to different events, scholarships to uh, attend some of the national conferences, diocesan, regional, etc. because they are just really hurting. So to be able to help the diocese as a whole among our Asian parishes will be a huge blessing. The second part, forming our youth and families. This is huge, obviously. You know, one, one mistake that sometimes the church makes in, in referring to youth is that they're just the future of the church, which they are, but they're also part of the church now. And so to be building them up in their discipleship now is a huge part. And so the first portion, Catholic school, financial aid, endowment, um, the way that it was explained to me is that actually they're going to be broadening scholarships. Um, our superintendent of schools for the diocese of Lansing, Sean Costello, has a saying. He said, everybody has a Catholic school. So whether you actually have a Catholic school in your parish or not, you have a Catholic school. So maybe the neighboring town that doesn't have a Catholic school could come to the one that does. But the problem is funding oftentimes. And so these endowments where they invest that, well, that $12.5 million, some of us will be living off, or some of the parishes that don't have a Catholic school will be able to now take advantage of some of these scholarships to attend a, a close by Catholic school or one of our four regional Catholic high schools, that type of thing, which we wouldn't want to see here, by the way. But, anyways, there are some places in the diocese where they would want to send them off to the Catholic high school. Um, the nice part of religious education and parent formation here and Fowler, we all have religious education, we have faith formation for our young people through high school. And I just assume that's what they do, that's the reality. Almost across the board, most of the, of the parishes in our diocese, they quit faith formation as soon as their kids are confirmed, which the norm currently um, in our diocese, the norm is for the middle school, eighth to ninth grade. So just imagine our young people in this, in this parish having no faith formation after ninth grade. They're just off on their own. Or maybe they go to youth groups. Well, there's a, there's a research organization that's called CARA, and they do these, they study church dynamics and demographics. They say that at post-confirmation, the percentage nationwide, we don't suffer from this horrible percentage here, thankfully, but nationwide, the amount of teenagers that will attend youth group after their faith formation ends is only 5%. And so that's, there are parishes in our diocese that reflect that. And so um, the second part of forming our youth and families, uh, where it's religious education and faith formation, this will allow some of those parishes that can't afford to hire full-timers, maybe, maybe that would be the road they would take. Or maybe they would get a bunch of volunteers together and buy some resources to be able to equip their young people so that they're not just cut off after confirmation. Um, and then in addition to that, a huge part of that is families family formation. Now we have, again, a lot of opportunities for people of all ages to grow and continue to grow in their faith here in our parish, but a lot of the parishes throughout our diocese don't have that. And the statistics, again, are that a lot of the parents will drop their kids off through confirmation, and then once confirmation is done, um, if their parish has a weak ministry structure, some of those parents are not, are not even taking their kids to church anymore. So again, not a problem we necessarily have here, but in becoming missionary disciples, building up our diocese as a whole, this second section of education and faith formation, parent formation, uh, will be huge. Um, I'm just curious how many guys have heard of Formed? We've talked about it here. So Formed, this is something that, that if, depending on this dollar a month that ends up being raised, that's something that perhaps <coughs> the diocese could work out a deal with the organization where all of the parishes would be able to have that on a continuing basis and access to all those um, the great content that's in there. So uh, building up religious education structures and parent formation. Now another component of that is because so many of our parishes don't actually have a formal religious education structure, they do have, a lot of them do have some level of youth ministry, whether it's part-time, half-time, full-time, you know, grouped with the neighboring parish. Um, but one thing that we're trying to do at the diocesan level is encourage some of those, those youth ministers to be not just doing the fun and game stuff that sometimes is found in youth ministry activities or the retreats and that type of stuff, but also some ongoing faith formation, because I was also naive to how many youth groups were not having any catechetical content. 
and we're having any of the doctrinal elements that we need to be formed as authentic disciples. So these funds would be able to be a bolstering for those parishes uh, that kind of need that. Um, the Catholic Charities Endowment, it kind of speaks to itself in your, in your uh, trifold there. And then it goes out about to spell even some more capital needs. So there's the general endowment that will kind of give life to the ongoing operations that our Catholic Charities throughout the diocese do. Uh, but then there are some, some pressing capital uh, needs for our Catholic Charities facilities. And those are kind of spelled out down there. Those are one-time expenses. Uh, then the endowments would continue to um, fund the ongoing operations. So um, even before I started uh, in my current position uh, and in, in the Diocese of Lansing and Youth Ministry, I was on the Diocesan Pastoral Council for two or three years. And there, was, there were people from each region of the diocese. And again, back to the Flint uh, region, uh, some of the some of the charitable works that they're doing in that region are amazing, um, but they're needing funding because there's that much hurt and brokenness and poverty in that region. Um, so some of those endowments continue those ongoing operations as well as to beef up their facilities so they can continue to do that. Um, the new evangelization initiatives, three million dollars. I can say now this is this is something a little bit different, but it's kind of along the same lines. A few years ago, we took advantage of something that the Diocese of Lansing offered and was in the form of evangelization grants where they offered uh, X amount of dollars if you were going to do something to further evangelization and discipleship.